Hi everyone, this is Chris here with Bowen House Fix, and today we're going to go over the basics of how to set up and operate a portable generator when you have a power outage. So stay tuned, let's go to the basement, we'll show you four easy steps to get you going. Okay, so step one is coming down to your basement or wherever your electrical panel is and making sure the power is turned off. It's very important for your portable generator. It's very easy to hook up, but there's a few easy steps. One, we want to come in and make sure that the main power is turned off. So as you can see here, turned off this way, so it's locked out. The power would normally be on here, but we have everything turned off. So now that we have everything turned off, you want to turn off all of your breakers. Make sure everything is turned off. We're going to show you why here in a minute. But that's basically step one. Make sure all your, your main power is off up at the top on the 200 amp. You may have a 100 or a 60. Make sure that's off and all of the others are off. Now we're going to go outside and prep the generator. Okay, now we're back out at the generator. We have a 3,250 watt, six and a half horse portable generator. It runs about 2,500 watts. It peaks at 3,250. So what we wanna basically do here is check the oil, check the gas, make sure everything is full, proper levels. You wanna place it on level ground, at least 20 feet away from the house. This is very important for fire hazard and carbon monoxide, you don't want it close to the house. As you can see, we have the house wired into the 200 amp panel with a lockout. With the generator plug here. So we have that. We have cable run back to the generator. So you don't have to use extension cords. Those are really dicey if you're using an extension cord. Uh, put the, putting those into a wall socket, that's a whole other way to do it, but not really safe. So this is the best way to do it. Next, we want to plug up the generator. But before that, we're going to crank it up real quick. They're basically really easy. Like we said, oil and gas, make sure they're proper levels, make sure the unit is level. I'm gonna turn on the generator. You're gonna choke it. Make sure the fuel is turned on. That's off, that's on. And we're gonna give it a pull here. Sometimes it takes a few tries. Turn the choke off. And now that it's running, we're going to plug in the generator first here. And it's plugged in. Everything is up and running, so now we'll go to step three and turn on the power to the house and in the basement. Okay, we're back at the panel. We've run you through steps one through three already. Step one, turning off all the power and breakers. Step two, prepping the generator. Three, we started the generator and plugged in all the cords outside. So we now have panel uh, power to the panel. 
So now we're gonna hit up step four and we're gonna lock out the panel and start turning on the generator power. So what we're going to do here to lock this out, we have a mechanism here that's installed with the generator. So this locks it out in case power does come back on, it doesn't backfeed your grid, that would be bad. We wanna separate the, the regular utility power from the generator power, so this is off. We lock it out and there is a 30 amp breaker here, mechanically interlocked breaker. We're going to turn that on. This now keeps your 200 amp locked out from the utility. We now have power and now we're going to start to restore power from the breakers one by one. And here's why. You also want to look at the instructions that come with the generator. So as it states here, you want to turn off all the circuit breakers. We did that. We set up the generator. We just slid the interlock over and turned that 30 amp breaker on on step three. Step four, now we're going to turn on the breakers one at a time to avoid overloading the generator. And step five reiterates the point to have no more than 10 single pole 20 amp breakers on at any time. So we're gonna turn those on one by one based on our needs. Turning off individual appliances fed by the breakers also lowers the demand on the generator too. So don't run more than what you need. Um, try to keep it at around 20 amps. We're gonna show you that in a minute. There's a very important note that we'll hit here in a minute once we turn all the power back on because we wanna tell you about a few notes here that will help you out. So let's start turning on the power. We're gonna get our lights. We're gonna get our refrigerator. Our boiler. And we've got the basics on that we need to run everything here. So now that we have power, we're gonna come over and turn on some lights and we're gonna hit some special tips and special information here that you might want to know because everyone's setup is different. And so we wanna hit some basic tips and points here too. Okay, now that we have power restored, we're gonna come back to this one note because you may have a few things that are not running at the moment. So back down to this note here. Air conditioning range, you know, ovens, cannot be run on generator power. Electric hot water heater can be operated if the other power is in use at a minimum. So very important here, your air conditioning your stove, range, and oven. It cannot be run on generator power. Why? Well, there's this little device here called a 240 volt transformer. As you can see here, it runs off 240 volts. A small portable generator is not enough to energize this transformer here. So what happens is it's not enough to ge generate electricity to operate your stove or to operate your, your main HVAC. So if you have like air conditioning like we have, we have a Unico system. It will not operate the Unico system for the air conditioning. It will not operate our range or an oven that's 220. A dryer will work because it doesn't have the transformer on it. But we ran into one problem on our boiler. Our boiler is not standalone anymore because it's tied into the air conditioning with the thermostat. So this created a very interesting point and something I'm gonna go show you over on the boiler so if your boiler is not standalone on its own thermostat by itself maybe your house doesn't have air conditioning and that's the way this house was before we would have been fine with this generator because it only takes about two amps to run the pump to turn it on and you're good to go but now we have a problem because the two systems are integrated i'm going to walk over here to the boiler and i'm going to show you because we don't have power to our thermostat and it's all back to this transformer here so let's walk over to the boiler and we'll show you how to get that running. There's a quick little fix we can do for that and a little hack that will get it up and running and make it pretty easy. Okay, now we're over here at the boiler. As you can see, this is a combination boiler for domestic hot water and our radiators. We have hot water radiators. As you can see, it is on, but the radiators are not heating. There's no power to the thermostat upstairs. Again, because it's all tied back into that Unico system and it has to go through this 240 volt transformer, which the portable generator again is not strong enough to power up. So what do we do? Because this electricity basically has to go all the way up into the attic, 
power on this transformer, then it sends the signal back down to the thermostat in our living room because these two systems are tied together. We need to separate that. So I called my HVAC guy and there's a relay box up next to the boiler here with a cover plate. We pull that off and it's low voltage, right? Your thermostat is low voltage, 24 volt on this right side here, the two prongs. It's low voltage, so it needs very little power to operate, but just to turn on the thermostat. If you were to take a voltmeter and pin these two out, you would get 24 volts here. You know you're getting power, but it's not coming out to energize the rest of the system to turn it on. So what we did was pull off the positive and negative here on that relay, and it's as simple as jumping it. So you can use a piece of wire. We used a fuse here. We just jump the two connections. It completes the circuit. It acts like the thermostat is on now and the boiler is on and running to the radiators. Now, one thing to keep in mind, this boiler now will run constantly. It is not on a thermostat. You basically flipped on the on switch when we turned it on over here. This thing will run until the end of time now. So you do have to monitor, it's very important. You do have to monitor the temperature in your house and make sure that it doesn't get too hot. You have to manually come down. I turn this off when it gets warm, shut the power off. You can leave the fuse in it just so you don't have to do this every time. But by jumping this, you're basically turning the thermostat on all the time. That's a nice little hack I like to show you guys. If you're in a tight, if your power is out and you need air conditioning, uh, you could plug in also um, a window unit, that would work. As long as it's on 110, doesn't exceed 20 amps. And you can have heat because you know you're, if you have a gas boiler, you don't need a lot of electricity to run it just for the water pump. And basically to turn the system on, I mean, it's a couple of amps tops, right? So you don't need that much electricity to run your boiler. So you can stay nice and warm when the power goes out. Also what you wanna do, and I made a cheat sheet here. Remember, you don't want to go over your 25 amps. So what we did here, we made a little cheat sheet and we know that the generator is around 2,500 watts to 3,200 max. So go do a little uh, research on your appliances that you're running, right? Your fridge, you usually have a data sticker on it, it's seven amps. Our coffee machine is like 1,400 watts, which is about 12. Microwave, 800 watts, that's around seven amps. The boiler is about two amps, radon pump. So go do a little homework, make sure you don't exceed the 20 amps. And like we said, this is around 21 to 25 amps on the generator max. We wanna stay kind of on the low end just so you don't overload it. So we can definitely run the fridge you know, the coffee machine, or the fridge and the freezer, all the lights in the house because they're LED, um, microwave too. So as long as you don't exceed 20 amps, you're good to go. Hope this kind of helped you guys out. Hope it gave you kind of the ins and outs of a basic setup and operation of a portable generator. And hope you stay warm and stay cool, whatever happens when you have a power outage. And hope that helped. Uh, there's, you know, a lot of, uh, Things going on with the portable generator, it seems like it's very hard to do. Sometimes it may seem a little intimidating to try to hook it up and operate it, but really it, it's pretty easy. And if you have a few questions, call your HVAC guy like I did. And we figured it out. And now we're staying warm with a power outage here. All right, this is Chris out here from My Old House Fix. We'll see you guys later.